about you, but I feel good. I don't know about you, but I feel good. I don't know about you, but I feel good. I don't know about you, but I feel Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, please welcome Hope College freshman, Miss Mackenzie Horkler. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mackenzie Horkler. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the DeVos Field House here on the campus of Hope College for today's MIAA Women's Basketball Tournament Contest between the Bells of St. Mary's and your Hope College Flying Dutch. Here are tonight's starting lineups. First, for St. Mary's at 1-4, a 5-9 junior from Wald Lake. Number two, Maddie Rezepka. And at one forward for the Flying Dutch, a 5-11 senior from Sycamore, Illinois. Number 14, Kate Majerus. At one forward for St. Mary's, a 5'10 senior from Plymouth, number 35, Bella Dugas. And at one forward for the Flying Dutch, a 5'11 senior from Grand Rapids, number 22, Sydney Muller. Starting at center for St. Mary's, a 6'1 freshman from Dyer, Indiana, number 34, Julia Schutz. And at center for the Flying Dutch, a 6'3", senior from Holland, number five, Olivia Voskel. At one guard for St. Mary's, a 5'7", sophomore from Orland Park, Illinois, number 12, Morgan Flynn. And at one guard for the Flying Dutch, a 5'6", senior from Hudsonville, number 12, Casey DeSmit. And at the final guard spot for St. Mary's, a 5'5 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 25, Nikki Murphy. And at the final guard spot for the Flying Dutch, a 5'10 senior from Zealand, number 20, Kennedy Schoonveld. St. Mary's is coached by Melissa Mikelski. Hope College is coached by Brian Morehouse. Your officials this evening, Jake Rolfe, Charles Smith, and Amanda Chapman.
Good afternoon and welcome to the Boss Fieldhouse for tonight's MIAA tournament matchup between the Flying Dutch of Hope College and the Bells of St. Mary's. This is the quarterfinal matchup in the MIAA Women's Basketball Tournament. I'm Jordan George alongside Anna Grace Fago. Anna Grace, what do you think some keys to this game are tonight for both these squads? Yeah, so I think while Hope's, um, yeah, well, so I think while Hope's uh, average points per game is higher than Mary's, Mary's rebounds and turnovers are quite important in this game in our strong suit. So I think it's really who controls the ball on defense and gets it back to the offense. Well, we saw Casey DeSmith knock down a corner three ball there for Hope's first point. She opens the scoring here tonight. To Smith, who averages six points per game. Here's a tip away. Majerus is going to take it on the break with a right hand drive. Easy two for Kate Majerus. Hope, 30 seconds off the clock and already out to a 5 0 lead. The defense is the key for this squad tonight. You're going to see De Smith guarding the ball handler here. That's number, twi number 25, Nikki Murphy. Ball's pinballed around there on the baseline. They're going to say it's off the flying Dutch. It's going to stay on the Bell's end. Hope, a team that is just stifling defensively. We see uh, they average 18 steals per game, and I already saw that on full display here in the first minute and a half or so. Speaking of steals, here's Schoonveld with a baseline steal. She's going to run the break herself, kicks it up to Voskel. Voskel, nifty catch, kicks to Majerus. Extra pass over there to Casey DeSmith. DeSmith's going to settle the offense with a right-hand dribble. Good patience here by Sydney Muller. She baseline drives. Easy two for Sydney Muller. 7 0 Hope. Fast start for the Dutch. Anna Grace, it seems like this St. Mary's team is really going to have to right the ship here early in order to stay in this one. I think they definitely need to stay on the tip top toes because Hope is just taking that ball and driving it down as fast as they can. Here's Nikki Murphy on the right wing. She's looking inside for Julia Schutz. Schutz kicks it out. That's Morgan Flynn. She's off on the fire. We've got a wrestling match going on out there. It's going to be a jump ball. It's going to stay on St. Mary's end. Looking at St. Mary's season stats, really balanced team offensively. They come in at 6-19 and 19, uh, overall on the season, but no players that average more than 10 points per game. we got a lot of players averaging 6 or 7 or 8 or 9, so they'll spread the wealth here tonight in DeVos. Here's Schutz. She kicks it out. Triple attempt there by Morgan Flynn. She's off, but that rebound by Murphy corralled. Here's 35, Bella Dugas. That one's off. Foskel skies for the board. Hope starts to track me the other way. How about Muller over there to Majerus? Kick out Voskel. Thought about the three. Hope's going to be content to swing it around here. Casey DeSmith fires from the left wing. Can't hit. Definitely get the sense here that Hope has sped up the St. Mary's team early on the defensive end. Nice drive there by Murphy, but that one's blocked by Majerus. Hope is all over St. Mary's offense tonight. Muller feeds it inside to Voskel. That looked like it was going to be the easiest two of the night for Olivia Voskel, but she's just off the mark. Murphy with a kick out. Nice left-hand drive there. That's number two, Maddie Rezepka with a left-hand finish. That was pretty. She averages eight points per game on the season. Smith kicks to Majerus. This all-senior starting lineup for the Hope Flying Dutch. Team that comes in ranked number two in the country on D3Hoops.com. Sydney Muller, right corner three, can't hit. Here comes Majerus guarding the ball handler. Hope just does such a good job of speeding up the offensive team. Nice finish there. How about that, Maddie Rezepka? Looks like St. Mary's is getting back on their feet. Yeah, the junior, Maddie Rezepka, 5'9", junior from Wald Lake, Michigan. Back-to-back -back baskets. She settles things offensively for the Bells. Muller up top to DeSmith. Ultra experienced lineup here for the Flying Dutch. They've played in so many big games together. Really comfortable in all environments. Voskel fumbles that one. Good move there by Nikki Murphy to poke it away from Olivia Voskel. Anna Grace looks like the Bells are going to make some wholesale substitutions here in an attempt to keep some fresh legs on the court. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Ella Deardoff, um, Mary Kay Guru, and Jasmine Townsend. It's a good call by head coach uh, Melissa Mikelski for the Bells just to keep some fresh legs out there. Hope likes to play at a fast pace, so they can run ragged for sure. Kate Majerus, top of the key three. Wow. Nothing but the bottom from the senior from Sycamore, Illinois. That's right in the center. Just right at that end of that shot clock right there, too. Yeah, big-time shot there by Majerus. And then 
She picks it up here on the defensive end. Gonna get tagged with a foul there, just a little bit of a push. Well, speaking of substitutions, Hope often loves to go with this platoon style system for head coach Brian Morehouse. They'll go with their next five in there pretty early in the game. We see not even four minutes into the game, they're gonna go with the next five. And uh, we may even see tonight a third five as well. We've seen that from Brian Morehouse on occasion. And 15, Ella McKinney, you see her guarding the ball. She really paces this second group. I'm, I will die on the hill that Ella McKinney uh, would be a all MIAA performer for pretty much any other team in, in the conference. Ella McKinney, really, really skilled guard that provides them so much balance. You see Claire Bagley, Meg Morehouse out there, as well as Hannah Smith, who really does the dirty work for this Flying Dutch team. Here goes St. Mary's heading the other way. That's number four, Ella L. Deerdorf. And how about that? That was a beautiful shot, made it even with the defensive hope. St. Mary's hanging in this thing, 10-6 Hope, five minutes in. These two teams have met twice this season. Last meeting was on February 5th in South Bend. 80-46 victory for the Flying Dutch in that one. Hannah Smith left hand drive out to Ella McKinney. McKinney probing the defense. Look at the strength from Ella McKinney. Wow. Right hand kicked it, kissed it off the glass for two. Gives Hope a 12-6 lead. Talk about defensive pressure. Meg Morehouse is the definition of it. We've seen her in so many games this year really harass the other team's point guard. 15 footer there from Jasmine Townsend is all air. Hope's gonna go the other way. Yeah, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Ella McKinney goes right back to that right hand drive. She gets hit, she'll head to the charity stripe for two. And I like this pace on this second unit right now. They look really patient and then they're willing to just kind of pick their spots and drive into the lane. Ella McKinney knocks in the first. McKinney, the junior from Hazlitt, Michigan. She shoots 70% from the free throw line on the season. And she's 100% tonight. This clock ticks down here towards four minutes left in the first quarter. Get a sense that this game's kind of teetering where if Hope goes on a 4-0 or 6-0 run, they could really break it open. St. Mary's doing a good job here recently offensively. Just stifling defense from Hope right now. Ella McKinney is really blocking St. Mary's right now. Yeah, Ella McKinney, you, that, that, that turnover, or near turnover there was definitely forced by her. You could just tell by the, the speed that she was forcing the St. Mary's player to play at. Gonna get a timeout there from uh, head coach Brian Morehouse. And uh, it's gonna be a 30 second timeout, so we're gonna keep her right here. Anna Grace, I get the sense that, like I just said, this game's kind of teetering on a tipping point right now. We've seen St. Mary's be able to not get a couple layups. What do you think Hope needs to do here over the next few minutes to kind of uh, bust this game wide open? Yeah, I think that their defense has been staying really strong, but they need to engage more um, on their shooting and just take their time. Be patient. I mean, they've, they've gained control of the ball for most of the time, and they have that time to be able to just shoot and directly do it. For sure, for sure. So we've seen when Hope's been able to be patient and kind of share the ball offensively, they've been able to make things happen. Let's paint the picture here for you in the MIAA um, in terms of the, the women's tournament. So this is the quarterfinal matchup. Try and uh, receive their one seed in the MIAA women's tournament. Hope uh, and St. Mary's are playing right now for the right to play Calvin or Adrian in the semifinals. The higher seeded team this year is hosting each game in the MIAA tournament. So if Hope were to emerge victorious, they would host. If St. Mary's wins here tonight, they would host that next semifinal game. Meg Morehouse is uh, getting out of the break here. She kicks it over to Claire Bagley. Morehouse just lightning quick on the dribble. McKinney right hand drive. Those might be the easiest two she gets all day. Yeah. Ella McKinney right hand layup. She loves that play and for good reason. She's great at it. Just really active hands right now defensively from Hope. It seems like no pass from St. Mary's is getting away undeflected. And Meg Morehouse is a good example of that there. I do like St. Mary's strategy here again by 
quick substitutions, trying to keep fresh legs out there. I mean, Hope's bringing in five new players each three or four minutes, so it's tough to compete with for sure. A step back, three ball by number four, L. Deerdorf. That one's off the backboard, and Claire Bagley runs out and gets an easy two. <laughs> Hope is just great at driving that ball all the way from the other side of the court down to just shoot that easy lip. Yeah, Hope's definitely really comfortable in transition. That one's off from St. Mary's, but nice offensive rebound there by Naya Porter, and Naya Porter unable to connect the Hope defense. Really hounding the bells right now. Hannah Smith finds herself on the right block, kicks to McKinney. Look at the ball movement. Shot clock takes down to 10 here. Morehouse stops, kicks to Hannah Smith. Hannah Smith, right wing, three ball. That one's off. Good patience, though, from Hope. That's a solid offensive trip for the Flying Dutch. Jasmine Townsend kicks. We've seen 35 uh, Bella Dugas be able to get free a couple different times for corner three ball. She's been unable to connect, but she's a, a player that St. Mary's really uh, feels comfortable with taking three balls there. So I like St. Mary's aggressiveness right now. They're uh, not shying away from scoring opportunities, just struggling to shoot it. Over 0 of 5 from three point land right now are the Bells. Looks like it's still St. Mary's ball. Did have a hope substitution here. Sydney Muller checked into the ball game. How about that? That's 25 Nikki Murphy from the left wing. Cuts the hope lead to single digits at nine. Here's McKinney, she'll run the point now and then for this second group, which I do think is a good look for the Flying Dutch. Just change of pace. McKinney, ultra patient, as opposed to uh, Meg Morehouse's quickness. Meg Morehouse, deep three ball there. She's off, but Ella McKinney corrals the rebound. Tried to kick it back out to Morehouse. That one's picked off by Nikki Murphy. Murphy's definitely on her A game tonight. She's done been all over for both offense and defense for St. Mary's. Nice cut in there and a nice find by Murphy. 14, Claire Bartz just found the opening and a uh, nice right-handed layup there. But speaking of openings, that's Hannah Smith uh, found herself on an island. I think she was a little bit surprised she was so open there, laid it in for two. Looks like Hope is about to do another full substitution almost. Yeah, Sydney Muller snuck in there about a minute ago. Other than that, they're going to bring four new players in. That's St. Mary's going to get a steady diet of that tonight. There's no doubt. This Hope defense... They have some of these trips where they just really force you to play long offensive possessions. It's tough to compete against. That one's off by 14, Claire Bartz. Hope's going to go the other way. Really comfortable in transition. A little bit of miscommunication there. And a full substitution for Hope. The starters are going to come back in. and Yeah, Anna Grace, we were talking talking before we went on air here about how just old and experienced this Hope starting lineup is. You have Kennedy Schoonville who knocks in an elbow jumper there. You have Sydney Muller and Olivia Vosco all in their fifth year at Hope and just have played in so many big games. It's a huge, huge asset for this Hope team. The community of the team is probably what makes this team is that they just all know each other and know how to work and know what each other's pros and cons are, and that's how they work so well. Yeah, no doubt about it. Olivia Vosco definitely affected that shot inside. That one's off for St. Mary's. Hope holds an 11-point lead as we take down towards a minute. Sydney Muller just slicing through the defense. Got hit. Wasn't able to convert, but she'll head to the line. St. Mary's number 25, Nikki Murphy. That is her first team's second. Nikki Murphy picks up that foul. She's been really active for St. Mary's here early. We just saw her with a nice pass inside to, to Bartz and then two early layups. Nikki Murphy is going to have to keep her foot on the gas here tonight for uh, St. Mary's to continue to compete in this one. First foul shot is good. Muller knocks in the first one. She shoots 66% on the season from the free throw line. The super senior, some would call her, from uh, <laughs> Grand Rapids Christian High School. Two for two at the line for Sydney Muller. Gives Hope a 13-point lead as we take down under one minute here at DeVos Fieldhouse. Right hand drive there by Maddie Rezepka. Good ball movement here from St. Mary's. 
Bartz kicks. Rezepka, corner three ball. Yes, Manny Rezepka. Beautiful play. Rezepka, seven early points. Sydney Muller just answers. We've seen that time and time again here tonight when St. Mary is able to put a to put points on the board. Hope just responds so quickly. St. Mary's is definitely picking up their pace of their um, game, though. They are just moving fast on the field, and I think that's what they're trying to do, keep up with hopes. Yeah, here goes Kate Majerus to, to Casey to Smith. Smith puts the brakes on wisely, pulls it out. Hope's going to hold for the last one here. Sydney Muller thought about the three for a good two and a half seconds, but they'll take the last shot. Yeah, that ball screen at Voskel is just really hard to defend. Voskel such a unique player that can play on the outside and the inside. That's a really good end of shot clock or end of clock look for Hope. See what Coach Brian Morehouse here has for a sideline out of bounds play. Yeah, they're going to go back to that ball screen at Voskel. So tough. Schoonveld got it off in time. Just a little bit short. Well. Hope with a fast start here on pace to eclipse the century mark with this offense. Hope up 26 to 13 after quarter number one over the Bells of St. Mary's. We'll be right back here after a quick break from DeVos Fieldhouse. With 40 acres of natural beauty close to downtown Holland, the farmstead has a little bit of everything for active seniors. Except you may never want to leave your home. With a modern no-step floor plan to serve your needs for years to come, you'll forget how much there is to do around here. So here goes. <laughs> Want to go over that again? Visit thefarmstead.org. here at DeVos Fieldhouse on the campus of Hope College MIAA tournament action here between the Dutch and the Bells of St. Mary's. Taking a look at some first quarter stats. Hope's defense has definitely had a heavy hand in this one. St. Mary's shooting 30% from the field and only 16% from the three-point line. So this Hope defense has been stifling here so far. Only two turnovers for St. Mary's though. That's definitely been a positive for the Bells. You see a foul picked up there by Kate Majerus trying to deny the basketball. Hope leads by 13 here. And like we said before, Anna Grace definitely get the sense that the next big hope, big hope run that we have here um, could definitely break this game wide open. St. Mary's made some substitutions at the quarter break. 34, Julie Schutz. Schutz leads this team in scoring. That's a turnover there from Schutz, the freshman out of Dyer, Indiana. Here goes Schoonveld on the left wing. Got a little bit of news to report on the program here today. Speaking of Kennedy Schoonveld, she was just named uh, about 23 minutes ago the MIAA MVP for this season. Her third win, her third time consecutively winning the MIAA MVP award. Just such an impressive career from Kennedy Schoonveld and Olivia Voskel named MIAA Defensive Player of the Year for her fourth straight year. The fact that you can win that award four straight years is just so impressive. Such a duo, two high school teammates that came here to Hope and um, have just really paced this program over the last, we'll make it five years now. So congratulations to both Olivia and Kennedy and it's only fitting that the Defensive Player of the Year picks up a big time rebound and then lays it in for two. Well, speaking of defense, this Hope defense has really picked it up here over the first minute and a half or so of the second quarter. That's another deflection by this Hope team. St. Mary's going to look to inbound here. Tough against Hope's length. Nice cut there by 23, Jasmine Townsend. 
Townsend found herself caught on the baseline and she's gonna fire up a shot there that hits the basket support. She was just trying to find a place to shoot but just couldn't find one over the defense of Hope. Yeah, exactly. Sydney Muller's pressure was really affecting her there. Jasmine Townsend, the freshman out of Jenison High School. All right, Jenison High School represent. I happened to attempt to teach English there, so <laughs> shout out to Jasmine. Kennedy Schoonveld, right wing three ball for the senior. That extends the Hope lead to 18, and you get the sense that Hope's kind of snowballing this lead right now. Foskell with another tip away. I, I, I don't know, the, the only way that I can describe it is just it seems like anytime St. Mary's is trying to get a pass off, Hope's getting at least a hand on it um, or forcing a turnover. It's got to be tough to play against this Hope defense. I think their length is just really what's showing right now on the field. Yeah, you get players like Kennedy Schoonveld out there who plays basically the point guard position at 5'10", and then uh, if you try to get into the lane, you have Voskel at 6'3", there in the paint, who just really affects every shot on the court. Here comes the Smith, she'll trigger the offense for Hope. Over to Majerus, and then Foskell at the top of the key. You see St. Mary's will play off her a little bit. She is capable of taking and making that shot, just passes it up there to Smith. Oh, nice kick out from Casey to Smith to her buddy Kate Majerus in the corner, can't hit. Kennedy Schoonville's there to clean up the mess. Oh, I thought Majerus might fire again. Over to Voskell, Voskell takes the contact, can't finish. St. Mary's defense is definitely pressuring Hope. They are not giving up. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I think the best way to, to go against this Hope team is to just definitely attack them defensively. So I like St. Mary's pressure. But uh, speaking of pressure, there's some from Hope as they force another turnover. Schoonbelt's going to take the lefty that lay up there on the break. And Hope's so comfortable in transition. It's almost like they're waiting for you to turn it over just so they can get out and run. Looks like Hope is about to do almost a full another substitution. The Smith picks the pocket of number three, Lauren Guma, and then lays, in, lays it in with her left hand. And Hope's offense is rolling right now. 35 points, less than halfway through quarter number two. It's going to be a full timeout from. Timeout Hope. 30 second timeout. Uh, we're going to see if it's a full or a 30 second. Vosfield House Hope leads by. I'm bad at math, Anna Grace, but I think that's 22. Hope leads by 22 here at the timeout. It's no secret. The best way to learn about Hope College is to spend time on our campus. The Hope Admissions team invites you to a personalized visit experience you won't forget. Located in downtown Holland, Michigan, our historic campus is close to shopping and dining and just 10 minutes from Lake Michigan. We invite you to check out our campus tour options or sign up for an online tour with the Hope Admissions office. There's never been a better time to see Hope College. Visit us at hope.edu slash admissions. Back here from Duvall's Fieldhouse, St. Mary's going to go on the offensive end. Hope just substituted. Meg Morehouse hits the deck. She is coming out with some fire tonight. Yeah, it seems like Meg Morehouse almost spends more time literally on her back on the court than standing up. Uh, she just plays so hard, so scrappy as Meg Morehouse. And we, we saw her in that trying loss that Hope had uh, about a month ago now where it was a huge game and Meg Morehouse stepped up in some big moments. She loves to play in big games and the MI tournament, MIAA tournament, anytime you play in that is a big game. So she's playing her hardest here tonight. Bagley inside to Hannah Smith. Morehouse right wing, three ball. How about that? Meg Morehouse rattles one home. That was a beautiful play by Hope right there. Yeah, Morehouse shoots 41% from the three-point land. She doesn't take a ton of them, but when she's open, she'll knock it in. A little miscommunication there from St. Mary's as number three, Lauren Gumo, is looking for a bounce pass to a teammate, and that one flies out of bounds. Morehouse drives down the court. Here's McKinney on the baseline. Man, that ball movement from Hope is just a thing of beauty to watch. Hannah Smith 
Rebound resets the shot clock to 20. McKinney unable to connect, but had an open one. They're gonna get a, a tie up there and a jump ball to possession arrow points to St. Mary's and a ton of substitutions here. We got a line change for St. Mary's with three players checking in. And then for Hope, we have 32 Courtney Lee, the freshman from Fishers, Indiana. We talk about how such how this is such a senior laden group for Hope. But uh they do have some really good young talent on the team. Courtney Lee, who stands at 6'1", kind of the next uh, the next forward in line once Vosco and some of these older players graduate. So fun to see her get on the court here. Schoonveld's off to the races, puts on the brakes, and is looking for a teammate. Out to McKinney, and she surveys the floor, going to slow things down a little bit for the Dutch. Bagley, left-hand drive, kick out. Schoonveld, corner, three ball. That one's a little long for Kennedy. St. Mary's definitely upping their defense game. They're all over Hope down at their side of the court. And shoots and scores. Yeah, El Dorhoff knocked that one in, stopped, popped, and connected the sophomore from Logansport, Indiana. Nice looking jumper there to cut the Hope lead at 23. McKinney, right wing three, that one's just off. Hope, prolific three point shooting team, number one in division three women's hoops in three point percentage is this Hope team. They shoot a remarkable 38% from the long line as a team, which is just really impressive, tough to do. It's, it's tough for an individual to shoot 38% from the three and uh, Hope does that as a team. Coach Morrow is going to take another full time out here to talk things over halfway through the second quarter. Hope leads by 23, 38 to 15. My 32 years, I can look back at clients and realize that when I started with them in my mid 30s, I was one of many professionals in their life. But since then, their doctors retired. Their attorneys retired, their ministers retired, all the key people in their life retired, but we're still there. And over time, we end up being very, very close to our clients. It's very hard to talk about your financial history without talking about your family history. We get to know it, we keep it confidential, and you can't help but begin to love these people. Welcome back to the friendly confines of DeVos Field House here in this Wednesday night MIAA tournament matchup between the Bells of St. Mary's and the Hope Flying Dutch. Hope off to a fast start here midway through the second quarter. Definitely been an offensive show that Hope has put on. They've played fast and furious here through the first 15 minutes. That was Caitlin Boninson who uh, went one for two from the free throw line there for the Bells. Morehouse gonna go right hand drive, stops to the right elbow. Over to Bagley. Kicks it back out to her roommate Morehouse. Boskell cross court pass, Ella McKinney deep left wing three. How about it, Ella McKinney? She's definitely one of Hope's leading scorers. She scored 19 points in their last um, win. Yeah, right, you are Anna Grace. Ella McKinney, just, you know, she can heat up so quickly and when Hope needs offense, they can count on her to provide it. I think the story of this second quarter has been the turnover numbers for St. Mary's and the steal numbers for Hope. St. Mary's came into the second quarter with only two turnovers and right now they sit at eight on the game. So Hope's defense is making St. Mary's highly uncomfortable here. More great ball movement for this Hope team. So unselfish. Voskel goes baseline drive, can't hit. Hannah Smith is there. Bagley kicks. Morehouse thought as she traveled. Yeah. Extra step there from Meg Morehouse. Got a little too excited out there. Yeah, Morehouse, such a quick player and just, you know, got a little ahead of herself. She wanted to drive and make a play. Yeah. 
Here comes St. Mary's. Nikki Murphy runs the show for the Bells. We've seen her facilitate pretty well here tonight. Out there to L. Deerdorf. It's turnover caused by Hope. Here comes Bagley. Nice step through move by Claire Bagley. She takes the contact and finishes. Deerdorf trying to get St. Mary's into some type of offensive set here. Looking for a teammate. Hope defense is definitely swarming. Kick out, three point try. And that's Bella Dugas connects there for her first three points of the afternoon. St. Mary's definitely content to let Hope swing it around the perimeter. Morehouse went behind the back over to Voskel. Voskel unable to hit, grabs her own rebound, finishes with the left hand. Olivia's Vo Olivia Voskel's length, just such a difference maker for her inside. Grabbed that rebound like it was nothing, then finished. And just at the three minute mark, Hope is about to do another full substitution tonight. Yeah, this is going to be their predominant freshman group. Oh my goodness, what a pass there and a finish. Wow. Hope does not slow down moving the ball down the court. Yeah, get Claire Bagley some, some shoulder pads and a helmet and she could go play wide receiver for you for the Hope football team. She went up and snagged that one and finished. Yeah, here comes this Hope lineup of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it is all freshmen. So Hope went with their first five and then came, came with a second five and now a third five for the Flying Dutch comprised of all freshmen. So always good to see some, uh, some younger players get on the court here. And uh, from what I've seen this season, this freshman group here, this group of five, has learned from that senior laden group just how you play defense because they really battled defensively as well. It's not like the pressure level is going to go down here once this fifth, this third group of five comes in. Yeah, I think the culture of the team has really trained up these freshmen really well, um, just to be fierce out there and to just shoot whatever chance they can get. Yeah, and you, you got to think about how every day in practice, this is the group that's playing against that starting five. So they face crazy competition in practice. So anything that they face on the court in MIAA play, they're not phased at all as this third group of five. A little bit of a miscue there by Jada Gardner, the freshman from Midland. She fumbles it. St. Mary's going to go the other way. Townsend, right wing, just hounded here by Hannah Kearns. Tarrant guarding out top two. Just no break from this Hope defense. Julia Schutz is fouled there by Abby Tarrant. Tarrant, the freshman from Bay City, John Glenn. Funny story, I, uh, Abby Tarrant definitely does not remember this, but I did give Abby Tarrant her first ever tour of Hope College while I worked for the admissions <laughs> office. So, Coach Morehouse, um, you owe me. I don't, I don't know. It might be <laughs> five bucks or a meal or something, but I'm going to claim that Abby Tarrant's at Hope College because that just amazing tour that I gave to her, her sophomore Purely year. Purely because of you, not yeah. because of this team or the culture. Yeah, or anything, no. But just because no, of you. No, no. Coach Morehouse knows that I give a mean tour. So, there you go. Well, Foul picked up by uh, by Hope here. This is going to send Towns into the line. Speaking of freshmen, another freshman is on the court. Definitely a player that St. Mary's has to be excited about to have over the next three years. The future is definitely bright for the St. Mary's program. They have multiple freshmen on this roster that see some time on the court. Towns in, knocks in the second. Here comes Jada Gardner. Her and Casey DeSmith really remind me a lot of each other when they're out there. Gardner really, really quick, sees the floor super well. Bellows right hand drive, that one's blocked by number five, Nia Porter. Nia Porter, nice block from the sophomore there. St. Mary's is definitely getting back up with their feet and kind of regrouping as this new group of kids come out here as well. Townsend, baseline shot, yes. Jasmine Townsend calmly steps up and knocks that one in. Hannah Kearns out to Tarrant. Tarrant left-hand dribble. Slightly fumbled that one on the left-hand drive and then wasn't able to make the corner pass there out to Hannah Kearns. Hope leads by 24 as the clock ticked down towards uh, one minute here in half number one. 
Bellows doing a good job on the ball there. Here's Nia Porter, who we just saw have pretty monstrous block on the other end. Bart swings it over to Schutz. Hope's defense is not making it easy for them to be able to find a place to shoot. Yeah, Schutz has struggled to get much going here tonight. Their leading scorer, she's been held scoreless in this first half. That's a good defensive job by Hope. Here goes Gardner, she's gonna push the pace. Good hesitation dribble there by Gardner. Porter's gonna pick up the foul. It's just a little bit out of position there as Gardner was trying to drive to the rim. Baseline play here, Kurtz on the right wing over to Bellows. Still see that same technique, passing it around and shot right there, two points for Hope. Yeah, good job by Courtney Lee, not overcutting there. She just stopped where she knew she had space, turns and kissed it off the glass. Turnover and a steal here by Jada Gardner. Gardner puts on the brakes. Physicality there by Jada Gardner, throwing her shoulder into somebody. Taryn was able to scoop up the rebound but can't finish. Bodies on the deck as Naya Porter hit the floor. It's going to be a jump ball, and St. Mary's going to have the last offensive possession of this first half. Here comes Townsend. Ten seconds left in half number one. Pass there on the baseline. Good movement here. Burtz. Can't hit. Here goes Gardner. <laughs> Attempts well, to make some points on that last second. Yeah, got to respect the hustle there from Jada Gardner, just a little bit short on the half court shot. Well, Hope got off to a blazing offensive start here in half number one in the MIAA tournament quarterfinals. Hope leads 49-23 over the Bells of St. Mary's. We'll be back in just about 15 minutes from DeVos Fieldhouse for more Hope women's basketball action. for coming in and, and uh, you know, this is what your investment did. It's, it's so much more than that. There's so much more going on in their lives than just these investments and it's good to understand that totality so that you can say, well, you know, I know there's a better way of doing this or I have a resource. Uh, I know, you know, there are some other resources that we can help you with here. So it's, it's not just financial plan. It's serving people. It's serving people and loving on people. And that's very joyful. Another win. Been too 
strong for too long, I can't give in. That's the discipline of a champion. Overcome adversity and get it done. Then it run. Stood my ground, then I won. Yeah. You looking at the chosen one. I said you looking at the chosen one. I was made for this. You know that I was made for this. I was made for this. You know that I was made for this. One and great, now I'm showing up.
Trigby Johnson, and I serve as the Dean of the Chapel at Hope College. I'd like to thank you for your continued relationship with Hope. Thank you for being our people. People are what make this campus special, a people rooted in our shared faith in Jesus Christ. And in that spirit, I'd like to personally invite you to come join us for chapel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Come and join the next generation of Hope College students as we sing the old songs of the faith and some new ones. Come and enter in and experience the energy and vitality of what it is to be a Christian here at Hope College as God shapes us to be a people of hope now and for future generations. At Lawrence and Vanders Wart, we're interested in the history of our community. 26-year-old jeweler Jacob Raven came to Holland in 1889. The northwest corner of 8th Street and River Avenue was already home to the thriving Holland City State Bank. Raven told bank personnel that he wanted to build a clock above the bank to keep the town on time, and it wouldn't cost them a cent. True to his word, Raven raised the funds with donations from merchants and local factories. High above the city streets, the tower was completed in 1892. Holland's clock tower still ticks high above 8th Street, watching over a town that still loves to run on time. Innovation and ambition today can pay dividends for decades. Lawrence and Vanderswart, interested in our history, invested in our future. At Lawrence and Vanderswart, we are interested in the history of our community. This farm once belonged to Albertus Van Walty, founding father of the city of Holland. And this house, built by his son Ben in 1872, has been known through the years as the Maples, due to the large trees in the front yard planted by Van Ralty himself. These trees stand today because of the industry and vision of Albertus Van Ralty. Today, the DeGraff Nature Center taps the maples and demonstrates how maple syrup was made centuries ago. Innovation and ambition today can pay dividends for decades. Lawrence and Vanderswart, interested in our history, invested in our... With 40 acres of natural beauty close to downtown Holland, the farmstead has a little bit of everything for active seniors. Except you may never want to leave your home. With a modern no-step floor plan to serve your needs for years to come, you'll forget how much there is to do around here. So here goes. that again? Visit thefarmstead.org. Honey, hit the road! <laughs> uh, honey, did you remember to bring the GPS? Nope. Oh. Well, you have an app on your phone to tell us how to get where we're going? I do not. Really? So you have an actual map, like the kind that are hard to fold. Uh-uh. You just know where you're going? No idea. Don't be this guy when it comes to financial planning. LVZ Advisors will help get you there. Hey, we're all a little lost. Do uh, you know where the lake is? Yeah.
Welcome back to Duvall's Fieldhouse here for half number two of this MIAA quarterfinal matchup between the Dutch of Hope and the Bells of St. Mary's. Fast start by Hope uh, offensively in the first half, putting up 49 and one half. Really impressive numbers and really well-balanced scoring from this Hope team, which is nothing new. We've seen that throughout the season from them. Um, fun little side note here. Decent amount of student support here tonight on this Wednesday. See some of the uh, some of the varsity boys players as well. We got Brady Swinehart's over there, Clayton Dykehouse from the uh, Hope Flying Dutchman men's team. So gotta love athletes supporting athletes here at DeVos. They're, they're making some noise over there. I see Brady Swinehart's up on his feet. Good to see good energy here at DeVos here uh, this afternoon. Well, Hope's going to inbound. They start with the ball here in half number two. Casey DeSmits on the left wing. Hope has their starting group back out there. Voskel, wild pass from Olivia Voskel. Schoonveld corrals it. Muller kicks to Voskel. Voskel goes baseline, right-hand drive. She can't hit. Majerus tracks it down. That one's going to be tipped out. Good hustle by both squads here to start half number two. St. Mary's defense is definitely all rested up from halftime and coming back at it for Hope. Yeah, definitely physical start here by St. Mary's. They're playing hard, battling here at the start of quarter number three. Sydney Muller stops the free throw line. Swings it around here, patient offense from Hope. Muller baseline drive. Little skip pass to DeSmith. Majerus, three ball try. That one's just off for Kate Majerus. Nice rebound there by Schutz. She's gonna take it herself with the right hand. Stops the three point line. Oh, good back cut there. Just got a loss in no man's land was Nikki Murphy. And Sydney Muller comes up with a steal for Hope. That'll be steal number eight on the, on the afternoon for Hope. Here comes Schutz. Kicks it out. Morgan Flynn is short on the three ball. Schoonveld's gonna go the other way, waste no time. Over to Muller. Muller slicing down the lane. Right hand finish. Can't do it. That one pinballed around on the rim for what seemed like an hour. St. Mary's going to go the other way. Pretty fast moving second half here. They're going back and forth. Right down. Doesn't seem too much scoring just yet, though. Yeah, I feel like I need to catch my breath here with calling this first two minutes. Both these teams not putting on the brakes whatsoever. Voskel, nice move there. there. We go. Got some points back up on the board for the second half here. Yeah, Voskel, nice move there. Just took her time and then laid it in with the left hand off the glass. Here's Murphy. She's trying to jumpstart this St. Mary's offense. Good steal there by Majerus. Going to go the other way. Two on one try for Hope. Schoonveld, step through move. Right hand can't hit. Goes to the left and can't hit as well. Good interior defense from St. Mary's. A lot of strong defense right there. Yeah, Julia Schutz was there to provide some resistance for the Bells. Hope is getting ready to do another full substitution as St. Mary's trying to find a way to just get some points on the board. Schutz tried a left wing three ball there, couldn't hit. Muller's gonna slow things down for the Dutch. Try to get a quality look here. Offense over the first three minutes has been hard to come by from both these squads. Muller, pass, good extra pass there from DeSmith to Schoonveld. Ooh, in and out. That one was halfway down for Kennedy Schoonveld. She couldn't hit. Hope from the three-point line here tonight, five for 15. That's a little bit uncharacteristic for the Flying Dutch as we saw a nice move there by Maddie Rezepka. Rezepka leads St. Mary's in scoring today. Muller wastes no time though and goes with the left hand to return the favor. Murphy is uh, driving the ball down the court and we've seen her play a lot tonight. She's a strong influence for St. Mary's. Always a strong defense as well. Yeah, Murphy is gonna potentially need some ice on the bus ride home. She's played a ton of minutes here against really stout Hope defense. Kick out here. It's Bella Dugas, she can't hit, but that's a good look for Bella Dugas. We've seen her be aggressive, the senior from Plymouth, Michigan, Farmington Mercy High School product. DeSmith was getting hounded there by Nikki Murphy. And it looks like a full substitution for both Hope and St. Mary's. So we're gonna get a lot of new players out here for the first time in the second half. 
Yeah, you don't see that often in basketball. Just <laughs> full line change, both squads. They said, you know, let's make this an entirely different ball game here in the span of half a second. A plethora of new Dutch and bells out there. I think it's definitely a common theme for Hope, and I think it's great that uh, St. Mary's is keeping on top of it because they're definitely both two fast-moving teams. You don't want either one to be getting tired out there. McKinney kicks to Smith. Here's Claire Bagley, left wing, three ball. Claire Bagley can't hit. Hope, a little bit cold here from the three-point line in the second half. They're getting good looks, though. That's Naya Porter, swings it over. Good ball movement here. El Deerdorf can't hit that one. Three-pointers are just not the main theme of tonight so far in the second half. Courtney Lee, good rebound over to Meg Morehouse. Hope wasting no time. Hannah Smith's going to post on the right block. She's takes a little bit of a spill there on the baseline. Definitely getting a little aggressive. Got to credit the St. Mary's defense, though. They've it's been pretty obvious they're coming out aggressive in the second half. Get the sense that no matter what the scoreboard says here through the next 15 minutes of gameplay, uh, St. Mary's will keep battling. There's no doubt about that. Nice move there by Morehouse. Kind of snaked through the defense. Couldn't finish it. Good job, Morehouse, though, of getting into the backboard. Held ball. Possession will go to St. Mary's. Here comes L. Deer L. Deerdorf. Deerdorf's played a ton of minutes here tonight as well. She has four points and a couple of rebounds for the Bells. Good steal there by Claire Bagley. Bagley gives it to Morehouse. Hope's going to push the pace like crazy. Baseball pass down there. Here's Ella McKinney. Right wing three ball for Ella McKinney. Yes. Wow. What a beautiful long play by Hope. You don't see that too often when they just chuck the ball all the way down the court, but it definitely works for them to get that free open space to shoot. Yeah, why waste time dribbling it if you can just chuck it right down there yourself? Here goes Morehouse. Speaking of not wasting any time, Morehouse flies and down there with the right hand. Tips right in there. They are a fast-moving team and will not be given up in the second half. Stats to look at for Hope here is 22 points off turnovers so far tonight. St. Mary is going to continue the theme of mass substitutions as they send a brand new five in. That five for St. Mary spent less than two minutes on the court, so quick substitutions here. It looks like one of their leading scorers, uh, Jasmine Townsend, is back in the game, so it'll be interesting to see how she plays out here. Yeah, Thompson was really aggressive in the first half. She, uh, two for two from the free throw line, has four points for St. Mary's in half number one. Like we said, only a freshman. Hope leads by 33 here halfway through quarter number three. Little meeting of the minds there. Little meeting of the referees. They get it all straightened out. St. Mary's goes on the offensive end. Nice cut there by Bella Dugas, but that one's picked up by Meg Morehouse. Morehouse furiously driving the other way. McKinney is going to try to go two for two from the three. She can't. Bagley's there. Johnny on the spot for the board. Man, that first step of Meg Morehouse is wow. lightning quick. I wonder what Hope is going to do in these next few minutes, though. They're, as far as three-pointers, I definitely think that they haven't been making the best shots for those if they're going to try to keep on going for those twos or for those threes. Yeah, you see, I, I totally agree with you, Anna Grace, that maybe the formula is to be aggressive and drive it into the paint and try to get some easy layups to open up that three-point game because we've seen them attempt quite a few here in the first few minutes of the second half. Morehouse having an excellent junior campaign as Meg Morehouse over her first two years. Really, really solid role player for the Flying Dutch. And we've seen her come into her own. It's obvious that next year as a senior, Meg Morehouse is going to be a catalyst for this Hope team. McKinney, nice no-look dish to Claire Bagley. Showtime. Wow. Great pass there by McKinney, and then Bagley finishes it. Bagley the... Forest Hills Central product, Ada Michigan, extends the Hope lead. 
creeping up right around 40 now for the Flying Dutch as they lead by 37. It's going to be a full timeout by the Bells of St. Mary's. We'll take a quick break here. Hope leads 62-25. said MIAA tournament quarterfinal time here. We're going to highlight a couple other scores from around the conference. Obviously a pivotal time where half of the conference's teams will have their season ended tonight. Uh, Alma's facing off against Albion. That one is in Albion. Albion leads by two at the half over the Scots, 30 to 28. Kalamazoo's facing off against the number one seed Trine. Trine's rolling in that one, 64-25 in Angola, Indiana. As we see a nice basket there by Ella McKinney. She has 14 on the afternoon. Sneaky night from Ella McKinney. Wow. And then Adrian's facing off against Calvin. The Knights are hosting the Bulldogs in Grand Rapids. Calvin leads comfortably in that one, 53 to 30. So it looks like at this point, um, other than that Alma Albion game, that one's tight at the half. The top seeds um, will most likely come away victorious here on this quarterfinal night in MIAA action. Hopes, they're going to keep their foot on the gas. They love to play out in transition, and that pass from McKinney is spot on to Claire Bagley. I really have not seen this technique much in basketball, but it really does work for Hope to just throw it long and get it down there. Nice cut in there. How about that? Bella Dugas, left-hand layup there. <laughs> you My see Ella McKinney chuck it down, and it didn't quite work out for them this time. And we see two full substitutions for St. Mary and Hope. Yeah, that one tipped off the fingers of Claire Bagley. Football coach Peter Sturzma, if you're listening, I, I may take back what I said about getting her some shoulder pads. Uh, maybe more of a tight end spot for Claire Bagley. I'm not sure. Uh, nevertheless, she's having a great game here and a great junior season for the Flying Dutch. Like you said, Anna Grace, full substitutions for both these squads. Hope starters are back out there. Number four, Al Deerdorf. Nice left hand dribble by Al Deerdorf. Tries to finish, can't. Voskel corrals the rebound. Here's another long pass from Muller to Majerus. We love to see it. So entertaining to watch, right? I mean, if you're going to. I mean, I didn't know I was at a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to call a basketball game, you want to you want to call or watch or participate in a basketball game, you want to have a team that's playing fast and hope sure is doing that here tonight. That was Kennedy Schoonveld's ninth point of the afternoon. Morgan Flynn down there to Schutz. Schutz, again, it's been a tough go for her tonight. She has no points this evening, and uh, she's the leading scorer for this St. Mary's ball club. That one's off from Nia Porter. It's a tick down towards one minute left. Nice pass by Muller. Easy two for Boston. That is what, definitely one of Pope's favorite plays, and it works almost every time. Yeah, Voskel so aware, able to just find space and trust that her teammates are going to hit her for easy looks. Really, really balanced attack out there right now for for Hope. Voskel has eight, DeSmith has five, Majerus has five, Schoonbelt has nine, and Muller has eight. It's just ultra unselfish is this entire group. They definitely have a team goal and not just for individual goals, and that's what I think works for them. 
Yeah, definitely the ability to see the collective rather than the individual has been a key culture piece for this Hope team over the last, really, five years. Voskel top of the key three. We'd love to see her take one of those. Love when Olivia Voskel gets one or two open threes each game. Schoonveld looking for Voskel. That one's intercepted by Schutz. Good play there by Julia Schutz, the freshman from Dyer, Indiana. So if you look at the St. Mary's roster, Julia Schutz, a freshman, their leading scorer. And then we have players like Jasmine Townsend, another freshman who's played well tonight. Lots to look forward to for the St. Mary's club. about St. Mary's just their aggressive play like they don't give up you know they're like almost basically 40 points under but they are still fighting hard and moving down the court as quickly as hope. Muller tried to go coast to coast couldn't hit on the layup yeah you're definitely spot on with that Anna Grace it's the kind of team that their their play style is aggressive and they're not gonna get not gonna differ from that no matter what the scoreboard says. Schutz tries the left hand try can't hit. Boskel scoops that layup up <laughs> A little bit of fight on the floor. Yeah, love it. One second left in quarter number three, and St. Mary's is swarming hope. <laughs> it was three to one there for just a second. Good job by Vosco to keep her composure. Shots tried. Oh, Shots tried a 15 foot fall away. Almost got it to go, couldn't hit. Well, that's gonna be three quarters here from Holland, Michigan. Duvall's Fieldhouse Hope leads 70 to 27 over the Bells of St. Mary's. kicked off here from DeVos Fieldhouse. Hope has their third five in here. The all-freshman lineup, really fun to watch. Abby Tarrant, left wing. Slices through the defense. Abby Tarrant, left hand off the glass. And Courtney's still in the game. I mean, she's been in here for most of the second half so far. She was in the second five as well. Yeah, got to give Courtney Lee a lot of credit. Played a bunch of minutes here tonight. Nice block there by Hannah Kurtz. She got a hand on that one. The freshman from DeWitt, Michigan, DeWitt High School. Here's Elle Deerdorf. Nice wraparound pass here. Shuts, right wing three, can't hit. Nice cut in there by Shuts. Shuts and one. Way to go. Like I said, they're staying aggressive, staying on top of their game. They're not giving up, fighting to the end. Yeah, Julia Shuts took the contact and then was still able to finish. Impressive play from the freshman who Averages 10 points per game <laughs> on the season. Man, I'm just laughing at Brady Swinehart over there is, is a one-man student section right now. <laughs> Bringing the energy. Here's Anna Kearns, swings it around to Abby Tarrant. Tarrant, who we saw score just about 20 seconds ago, over to Olivia Bellows. Bellows loses the handle there. 
St. Mary's recovers it fast and attempts to shoot. Yeah, unable to finish, but good defensive play by Morgan Flynn. Nice and pass. Morgan's right there. Honest, she's going to fill the role of Olivia very well once she leaves as, as she's super seniors. Courtney's right there in the paint always doing her job. Yeah, you're right about that. And uh, I like the fact that she's definitely a two-way player. You know, she's as focused defensively as she is offensively. So Courtney Lee, the 6'1 freshman from Fishers, Indiana, has shown throughout the season that she can really play, showing it again here tonight. Tarrant was a little bit early there and a little bit of contact for Hope. She's going to pick up the foul. Abby Tarrant, her second. That is her second. Team's second. Speaking of bringing in the energy, one thing I really love about watching this Hope team is their bench energy. Uh, no matter who's in the game, what the score is, anything else. If you take a look at their bench, those super seniors who have been here for five years are as excited as anybody in the gym when these freshmen play well. So always fun to watch. Taryn thought about the three ball. Goes with the left and takes the contact. She'll head to the line. Yeah, you definitely got it right about the bench. They're always up and down as whenever anybody makes a shot, makes a good play. They're definitely excited for the team. It's all about the culture. Yeah, we've said that word culture a few times today. And I know Anna Grace and I sound like a broken record when we talk about that stuff, but we really mean it. You know, it's uh, definitely a culture thing, an energy thing for for this Hope team. And I'll probably say the word culture two or three <laughs> more times here in the last quarter. We'll stick with them. They definitely won't forget the idea. <laughs> exactly. Abby Tarrant can't hit on the first. Tarrant, the freshman from Bay City, John Glenn, excellent high school career there. She's seen min minutes sparingly this year, but a player that definitely figures to be a key piece of this Hope team moving forward. St. Mary's made another substitution of all five. This is Maddie Rozepka, leading scorer tonight for St. Mary's. She has eight points on the evening. Yeah, just excellent defense there by Hannah Kearns, unyielding the freshman from DeWitt, forces the five-second call. This freshman team is so interesting to watch the whole time because the talent that they show is just really heartening because when you look at the starting lineup of Hope, it's just all seniors, and you're like, wow, what are they going to do next year? But you see this, and you're like, they have their hands full for sure. Yeah, that question gets answered once this five checks in. There's no doubt about it. Turnover there for Hope, rare turnover tonight. They've been able to clean up the turnover issues here over the last few minutes. That gives them nine turnovers on the evening. You ask Coach Morehouse or you ask any basketball coach, and they'll always say that any turnovers is too many turnovers, but they've been able to get it under control here in the second half. Nice steal there by Kearns. Hope's going to go on the run. And that technique of chucking it down and moving it down as fast as they can. And barely off the rim. Yeah, Bellows, shifty move there by Olivia Bellows. She had the defender kind of on skates there. She changed speed, changed direction. Freshman from Lake City, that was a nice move. Unable to finish, and Abby Tarrant will go to the line. This is her second time at the line in just the past, I think, minute or two. Tarrant knocks that one in. Tarrant's comfortable from the line. This is her second, yeah, her second trip here, as you said. And she makes her shooting average 75% tonight from the line. Tarrant has six points off the bench. I have a feeling we're going to see this all freshman lineup for the, for the rest of the game. I think that would be a good look for Coach Morehouse and uh, this Hope staff to just give this freshman team full reign over this fourth quarter. Give them as much experience as they can as these next few games for them is going to be more tight. Woo. There we go. Bellows, a little showtime pass there. No look as she hit Hannah Kearns in stride. That was a big time pass from Olivia Bellows and a nice finish by Hannah Kearns. I think they're definitely getting in their groove. Nice shot there by Nikki Murphy. She connects on the three ball on the right wing. Kurt's going to slow the pace over to Tarrant. Here's Bellows. We've seen her flashy player as Olivia Bellows. She'll be fun to watch for the next three years in a Hope uniform. 13 on the shot clock. Bellows, right hand drive, stops. Oh, great pass in there to Hannah Kurtz. Just off Hannah's hands. That one flies out of bounds. 
looks like we're going to be wrong about the freshman team staying in the whole time. It looks like they're getting a whole substitution again. Yeah, you know what, Anna Grace, I'm wrong much more often than I am right, <laughs> so I'm not surprised that Coach Morehouse got a substitution in there. I'll make another prediction, even though I'm probably uh, probably wrong on this one as well, but I feel like maybe two and a half minutes for this group, three minutes for this group, roll those freshmen out there again, but who knows, Brian Morehouse has won about a million games in DeVos Fieldhouse, so uh, he knows what he's doing about a million times more than me, obviously. <laughs> well, let's see. I'll hold you to that. Right now, you're 0-1. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Casey DeSmit flying around there defensively. She deflects that one out as they were looking for Maddie Rozepka. Rozepka, the junior from Wald Lake, has been the most effective offensive player for the Bells here tonight. Murphy gets that ball. She's definitely been a key player for St. Mary's. Yeah, Murphy, really quick ball handler. Nice pass out here. Good movement. Rozepka, top of the key three. She can't hit. Here comes Morehouse. Six minutes remaining in this one. Hope holds on to a comfortable 47-point lead. McKinney, oh, the whole bench wanted Ella McKinney to put that one back up. Almost too unselfish was Ella McKinney there. Yeah, Morehouse, that's going to be a charge. You could tell Morehouse took the brunt of that contact. She's smiling as she comes up having fun. That is her first. Team's Morehouse laying her body on the line there. Pays off as Hope goes the other way. There's McKinney. Kicks to Morehouse. Morehouse is recovered from her fall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Glad to see her up and moving okay. McKinney, crossover dribble. Kick out. Bagley, top of the key three. Ooh. Too strong for Claire Bagley. She spent too much time in the weight room. Foul's going to be on Hannah Smith. Loose oh, ball foul there. Third. Looks like it's going to be a full substitution for St. Mary's once again. A couple key players enter back in for St. Mary's. Jasmine Townsend, the freshman, checks back in. Julia Schutz, of course, checks back in as well. She is the leading scorer for this St. Mary's team on the season, has struggled offensively tonight. She had a key and one about two minutes ago to get her back on track. for St. Mary's. Hope's going to go the other way. So we tick down towards five minutes remaining here. Hope leads 79-32. Ultra balanced attack from this Hope team. Ellen McKinney leads them in scoring at 14, but plethora of Hope players that have looked really comfortable offensively. Oh, nice pass in there to Claire Bagley. There you go. Was just talking about Ellen McKinney's scoring ability and then unselfish there. Dumps it off to Claire Bagley. Nice move there by Jasmine Townsend. I like Jasmine Townsend's game. She's really aggressive, not afraid to drive there into the paint offensively and uh, only a freshman. So definitely like Jasmine Townsend's game. She definitely has a lot of outlook coming for these next three years as she starts playing. So it'll be interesting how she develops over these years to come. Yeah, no doubt about it. She's going to head to the free throw line here. Townsend, who has four points this evening. Make it five. Knocks in the first does Jasmine Townsend. She started two games for St. Mary's this year and uh, shoots 62% from the free throw line. Two for two for Jasmine Townsend. Here's Jada Gardner. Hopes all freshmen line up back in. I guess that makes me one for two on predictions today. <laughs> Anna Grace, we'll take it. How about that? We'll take Co the wins we can get. <laughs> yeah, Courtney Lee just hustling all over the floor. Here's Olivia Bellows, right wing three, can't oh. hit. You can see Hope's bench getting rowdy over here. <laughs> yeah, you got the feeling that that bench was about to explode if that one went down. Got a substitution for St. Mary's. Bellows wraparound pass out there to Hannah Kurtz. Tarrant thought about the three. 
stops. Hits Courtney Lee. Here's Lee with the right hand. So smooth oh, with Courtney Lee. Oh, in and out. I love it, though. Courtney Lee, no hesitation at all. Didn't even think about it. Said, I'm going to go try to score this with my right hand. Doesn't hit, but love the mindset from the freshman, Courtney Lee. You see Jasmine Townsend driving down the court. Always aggressive. Kaylin Bondinson kicks it out. This is Lauren Guma. That foul is going to be on Jada Gardner. It's going to send Ella Deerdorf to the line. Deerdorf knocks that one in. Two for two. Two for two for the line from Ella Deerdorf. Gives her six points on the evening. Hannah Currents thought about the three ball. Goes left hand drive, looking for Courtney Lee. Courtney Lee tips it out, grabs it back into possession for Hope. Tarrant. Yeah, Tarrant tried to put on the brakes there, just dragged her pivot foot a little bit. St. Mary's defense is definitely on top of that one, putting pressure on Hope. Chicken the armor for Hope. Here comes Jasmine Townsend. Top of the key as we take down towards three minutes left. St. Mary's trying to look for some offensive momentum. Going to be a foul there on Olivia Bellows. Hope has definitely come out with some more fouls out here. I think they're just getting excited out here and playing aggressive, but definitely more fouls than St. Mary's. Yeah, and St. Mary's is in the bonus situation, so to add on top of that, any time that Hope fouls now, they're going to send St. Mary's to the free throw line. St. Mary's, money from the line here recently. Lauren Guma knocks that one in. Two for two. That gives Guma two points. Here's Jada Gardner. Three minutes left in uh, this MIAA quarterfinal matchup. And hey, maybe for the last three minutes, these freshmen will be in. Yeah, there you go. Hannah Kearns, right hand drive kicks. Abby Tarrant, three ball right in front of the Hope bench. Wow. Not one person sitting on that Hope bench as they celebrate that three from freshman Abby Tarrant. Step through move, pretty. That was Beautiful. nice. Kaylin Bonnenson, a little step through move there with the left hand scoop shot. Gardner drives in hard with the right. She thought there was contact. Al Deerdorf, Gardner hits the deck. <laughs> a little bit of a fight out on the court. Gardner got parallel there, went full Superman mode for that one to try to corral that 50-50 ball. And uh, it'll go St. Mary's way with the possession arrow. Townsend, right wing. She's guarded again by Hannah Kearns. Yeah, it's going to be... Another five-second call. Second time that Hannah Kearns has forced a five-second call here tonight. With this uh, presumed hope victory here, Brian Morehouse moved to 19-0 all-time in first-round MIAA tournament games. Uh, talk about impressive. That Add that one to his resume. Jada Gardner gets hit. She'll head to the free throw line. Less than two minutes remaining. St. Mary's foul number 23, Jasmine Townsend. That is her Anna Grace, uh, see Hope here. 44-point lead late in this one. What do you think was the key for Hope here tonight in this quarterfinal game? They definitely got off to a fast start offensively. What, what do you think were some of the keys? Yeah, I definitely think as far as, as, as obviously the fast start, but just mm -hmm. moving down the field, moving down the court with the hand chuck, and I think that's honestly the best part about it is that St. Mary is always had to be on the top tier for defense mm -hmm. and not being able to recover for the offense because they're always constantly moving down the field. So that was definitely their key point. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree with you that I think Hope's pace that they played at, you know, just the speed gave St. Mary's some some big time issues. And this is a St. Mary's team that's a young team. They're going to keep fighting until the very end. We've talked about that a couple times here tonight. Their physicality is not going to not going to go down here in the last minute and a half, exactly. no doubt. It'll be interesting to see how they improve over the years. And as far as Hope, it looks like they'll be playing on Friday, if I'm if I'm correct. Yeah. So with this Hope Hope victory here as they close it out. The Bellows miss layup. Uh, they will play on Friday against the winner of the uh, Calvin and Adrian game that's going on right now in Grand Rapids. We'll get an update on that score here as I take a look. It looks like Calvin, that one's actually final. So Calvin defeated Adrian 75 to 46, meaning that Hope will play on fi on Friday at 530. That's going to be just a, a special night here in Duval. Says the men's team is also in the semifinals of the MIAA tournament. So that'll be a double header here. Hope men's and Hope women's. The women's team will play at 530 versus Calvin. A little rivalry flavor in there as well. And then uh, the men's game will follow against the Albion and College Britons. So tickets to that will be made available on the MIAA website uh, shortly after the conclusion of this one. Highly suggest that you make it out here to DeVos on Friday to watch both of the uh, both the Hope teams compete. Also, Courtney Lee just made a wonderful points there. Yeah, Courtney Lee adding to her scoring total at six. Um, another kind of wrinkle to that one is that one ticket on Friday will get you into both games. So no need to buy separate tickets. You just buy one and then, uh, then no better place to spend a Friday night than DeVos Fieldhouse. Now, what would you say that Hope's team between now and then should work on and improve on from this game? Obviously, they've had a great game, but there's always room for improvement. For sure. I, I think that's a great question. And they Hope spent so much of their time tonight in transition, you know, not in half-court offense. So Hope honestly didn't get a ton of time to really run through their half-court sets, half-court motion. I know Coach Brian Morehouse put in a new offense this year that's really been clicking for them, more of a, a dribble-drive penetration offense. So I'd say the next couple of days of practice, Practice, knowing Brian Morehouse, they'll really hone in offensively and then continue to battle defensively. The the backbone of this team is and always will be defense. So um, I expect them to work on both ends of the ball and then come out here against a Calvin team that uh, they always get fired up to play. Yeah, it'll be great. Great dynamic here in the field house as Robert always brings out most of Hope students. Yeah, exactly. Jada Gardner swings over to Bellows. This will be Hope's last offensive possession, presumably. Bellows, right hand drive. She finishes. Oh. Off the window for her first two points of the evening. That puts Hope at the 90-point mark. And how about this? Every player on the Hope roster has now scored a bucket tonight. <laughs> That's something to celebrate, no doubt. Definitely one team all working together. Gardner's going to dribble this one out. And Hope wins. 90 to 41 over the Bells of St. Mary's and got to give congratulations to the St. Mary's Bells on a well-fought season. Got to give a shout out to their lone senior, Bella Dugas, number 35, the senior from Plymouth, Michigan, as she closes out her career in a St. Mary's uniform. Every other player on the St. Mary's team will be back for next season. So lots to look forward to for the St. Mary's Club. Their season comes to an end here tonight uh, on a Wednesday night in DeVos for Hope. They'll move on. They will play the Calvin Knights. Who else would they play? They'll play the Calvin Knights on Friday in a doubleheader with the Hope men's team in the MIAA semifinal. For Anna Grace Fago, I'm Jordan George saying uh, good night and see you later and go Hope from DeVos Fieldhouse as Hope, lead, as Hope wins 90-41. to 41.